Hello and welcome to another episode of Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio. This is something that we haven't done in a very long time. It has been so long since there has been an <laughs> in-person episode, which we can chalk up to a whole bunch of things. But if you are watching, and hopefully you're watching on YouTube or you know, watching the YouTube clip from whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you can see that Andrew and I are in the same physical place. How crazy is that? Right? Like, awesome. Look, Whoa! We're, it's not a green screen. Like we're actually here. Wonder Twins. Wonder Twin powers activate. We're gonna get so far <laughs> down rabbit holes. I promise. We're gonna do our best to keep these episodes uh, tight. You know, yeah. uh, as much fun as we're having. Today's episode is about the role of parents in bringing up a martial arts child. We're gonna talk about for parents that train, for parents that don't train, unpacking all those things. Because in different schools, in different environments, there are different things that matter. So first off, if you're new to the show, welcome. Thanks for listening. <coughs> oh, I apologize. No, it was just the only, it was the only one. Good. If you want to go deep on what we do at Whistlekick, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find all the stuff that we've got going on over there. We've got a store. You can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15% off any of the stuff that we got going on. Well, you, we've also got a sh- website for this show whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can check out every episode we've ever done. You can look at photos and links, transcripts. You can leave us a tip. You can sign up for the newsletter. You can do all kinds of stuff over there. So check that out. And if you want to support us, you things that I mentioned, the number one thing that you can do is you can join our Patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash whistlekick. And you can get in for as little as two bucks a month. It goes up from there. And recently we rolled out and at no extra charge, we're going to start sending you stuff stickers and t-shirts and things like that so go check that out patreon.com slash whistlekick there's a tier that'll work for you and you get exclusive content it's really one of the ways that we try to cover the expenses on this show so without further ado andrew (laughs) welcome to my training space awesome hey it's great to be here it's nice to actually uh see someone in person for the first time in a while it's been a long time since we've been in the same physical spot that's Uh, true 18 months or so free training day yeah yeah Free training day of 2019. Long time ago. Hopefully we are able to do that again. We will. Soon. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Parents role. Now you started as a kid. I started as a yep. kid. I was yep. a lot younger than you yeah. were. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't start till I was in high school. Freshman in high school. But parents still have a role. And when we think about kids and kids joining martial arts, most kids have at least some encouragement from their parents to join. Mm-hmm. But the, the role of the parents is more than logistics. It right? should be. It, it should be. It doesn't mean that Our it kids is. kids going to last if that's, if it, that's the only well, role? Well, I mean, that's, that's what I would argue. No, they wouldn't. I would agree. So if, if we think about it, let's, let's break this down because we've always got to break down our conversations and make sure that we're talking about things in a, in a procedural way. Otherwise, we're going to get lost. We're going to miss pieces. Let's first talk about parents who don't train, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I I think that that's a pretty important delineation for us to make, parents who train versus not train, because uh, two two very uh, separate but sticky wickets, as one of my (laughs) high school teachers would have said. So let's let's imagine we've, we've got a kid, and it doesn't matter whether this kid is five or I think really 15. If they're not able to drive themselves, if they're not paying for their classes themselves, let's call that a kid. You know, yeah, there are exceptions. We can't talk about all of them, but that that kind of general place. Let's work backwards because I think this is often the easier thing to do. Where do parents get it wrong? Let's talk about some of the mistakes, sure, sure. The, the exceptions to the rules, and then we can build some rules off that. Well, I think the number one way is to not be involved in any way, shape, or form with what your child is learning. Sure. If if the parent is 100% only involved with, you're going to go to class today? Okay, great. I'll drive you, drop you off. Maybe they even leave during class and come back an hour later, and then they don't think about what their child has been doing during that hour. Sure. And then next week or the next class, okay, I'll drive you to class again, drop you off, bye, and then come back. I mean, I think that's the worst, in my opinion, the worst case scenario. Um, The least amount of involvement is the worst. Right. And while we don't have studies for this with 
martial arts classes. We have plenty of studies for academic education that show parents who are involved, who check the kids' homework, who ask questions about mm -hmm. it, who are engaged. The children learn more, function better, et cetera. So I can't imagine we can't apply that stuff to Absolutely. martial arts education because it is. When we train, we are learning, we are being educated in Absolutely. martial arts. So what might the bare minimum look like to get some of those benefits? Where is the bare minimum where parents are having a positive impact versus the paradigm that you shared? The least involvement. The, the bare minimum to do anything so that yeah. the kids get to class, they drive them to class, they wash their uniform and they pay the monthly dues. Yeah. What is the next step up from that? I would think at a minimum, it is engaging your child in what they learned that day. Mm. I mean, uh, oh, I mean, even going before that, I would say staying in the class, watching the class with the kids, being there and involved and watching what they're doing, mm. I think is, is, is important to, it would be to me. Sure. Um, but the, the next step would be engaging your child with what did they learn today? Now, you as a parent might have no idea what that form is supposed to look like. And so your child demonstrating it, it might be really bad, but that's okay. It is okay. The, the child doesn't know that necessarily, yeah. but they're, if you show encouragement and want to see what they learned, they're going to be excited to show you, Yeah, which keeps them more involved. What's the number one thing that gets kids out of martial arts that pulls them out, them not being excited about it and something else making them excited yeah if you can if you believe strongly that your child will benefit from martial arts training keep them engaged keep them excited absolutely i would i would agree wholeheartedly you know they're going to be more engaged and want to be there because they're excited to show you stuff and because you are showing an interest in it they're going to continue hopefully to be even more excited about sure. it and so what's the next level up i i I'm thinking it's home training, some kind of external training. Are you encouraging them? Are you demanding of them? You know, where, where's all that going? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, uh, first step would be, you know, engaging the student after class. What did you learn? The next step is making a space in your home mm. available for the child to practice on their own and encouraging, not forcing. I'm, I'm a strong advocate of not forcing your kids to do things, right. um, but encouraging them to be able to practice on their own at home, mm -hmm. whatever those things are. Maybe it's, maybe if they're super new, maybe it's just going home and doing high blocks, which if you're on video, you can see me do high blocks, you know? Um, or maybe they're just working punches, but at least being able to do that between classes will help to keep them engaged and involved and will make them progress faster. Sure, sure, completely agree. It's a really fine line between pushing the child such that they start to have a negative association with martial arts or anything versus encouragement and helping them correlate additional effort, home training, yep. with faster progress, such that they are enjoying the experience of class time and martial arts training overall. Yep. And I, I think the way you get there, you talked about it a little bit, rewarding the results, or I, rather the results, rewarding the effort. The effort, yeah. Hey, you just went out and you just did your form six times? Cool, that's awesome high five. It doesn't have to be a food reward. It doesn't have to be something big, but just helping them associate. When I do extra, I feel good. And if you can do that, yeah. I think that if we were to take a big step back, that is probably the number one thing that any parent can do for any child in anything. If you see them doing something that you know is beneficial for them, helping them build a positive association yeah, with absolutely. effort correlating to results mm -hmm. reward the effort they'll see the results they'll connect that chain all yep. goes well and to understand that it doesn't have to be a huge chunk of time this practice mm -hmm. I, you know for the listeners may know may 
likely know that I teach drumming on uh, as a as a, a job, yep. and I often will get parents that will ask me, "Well, how you know my my son or daughter has to practice for an hour a day, right, every day?" And I oft I tell them, I tell the parents with the student there, so that there is no like misunderstanding. Uh, I am not an advocate of sitting down to practice your drums for an hour a day. I think that's actually very detrimental. And the parents look at me like, well, what, how can that, how can that possibly be? They have to practice a lot. As a beginner to sit down for an hour and practice something, whether it's drumming or whether it's martial arts, mm. to sit down at home on your own, it's different when you're in a class, you know, and you're being taught, you know, you can be taught a lesson for an hour or an hour and a half, that's fine. But to practice on your own for an hour becomes a chore. It's so boring. It, and then the child will lose interest. I would much rather my students practice for five minutes in the morning, mm -hmm. 10 minutes at lunchtime. You know, maybe if they're really lucky, they have 15 minutes before dinner to practice. That is way more useful than sitting down for an hour. And so understanding that just that little bit of practice, going outside, doing your form for six times, like how long is that really going to take as a beginner? You're maybe 10 minutes. Yeah that's very rewarding and enriching for the student, even though it might not look like they did a lot. Practice as long as it's fun. Yeah. Not that a kid's gonna be able to understand that instruction necessarily, but if you can build an environment in, in all the ways that an environment is built, where they associate fun, enjoyment, progress with this effort, eventually as they age, not only will you not have to encourage them they're you're going to tell them to stop practicing <laughs> number one number two you've just set them up for life because that's how life works yep. if you can find the intersection of the things that you enjoy working on are able to progress at and see results from that progress that's all you need to do that is that is the secret to life mm -hmm. professionally as far as i'm concerned absolutely so why not build that in early? Where it goes wrong is parents doing what you talked about with drums. Go practice your forms. Go practice. I pay for classes. Rah, 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 rah. It's only been 20 minutes. You still have 40 minutes left. Yep. There is something to be said for discipline. But if you are looking for long-term involvement in martial arts, that is not the way to do it. Think about all the things that kids are required to do for long periods of time. How many of them do they enjoy? I have said time and time again, I would rather when a student hits a wall where they're no longer enjoying training, that the parents let them decide to stop training mm -hmm. because otherwise they are far less likely to go back later as an adult. I'd rather they have a positive association and say, oh man, I wish I hadn't quit then I wish my parents hadn't made me continue. Hmm, good that's, point. That's not a good thing. Yeah. Is there anything else for the parent who doesn't train that we should unpack before we go to the other? Um, I think it's also beneficial for the parent to ha have an understanding with the instructor how their child is doing. Hmm. Uh, I mean, if you think about any other learning environment that kids go through, there's a report card. You know, there is some, I mean, sometimes it's literally just a report card and that's all there is, but every school I know does a parent teacher conference at least once a year mm -hmm. during the school year, sometimes twice a year towards the, you know, towards the beginning and towards the end to see how their student has been progressing. I think it's important for parents to be involved and engaged in that aspect as well. Mm. And, th and that actually brings up an idea I've never even thought of. A lot of martial arts schools tend to correlate that progress, that engagement, that parent recognition of how the child is doing with belt rank, mm. with promotions. Yep. So there's an opportunity. You could have parent-teacher conferences. Sure. You could have report cards. Those things could work. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just gives the parent a more engagement to understand what their child is doing. Because uh, let's, let's say your child is six years old. Uh, you can ask them after class what they did, and they can kind of do it, but they can't necessarily express verbally because right. they don't quite have a full understanding of what's going on they're going to talk about what was fun exactly exactly That's the end of the conversation not necessarily what was what was learned sure. you know sure. so i think having an engagement with the instructor i think is really important all right so let's talk about parents who train mm. because i think all too often this is where it goes really sideways it can for sure because 
quite often in like a family style class, the parent finds something they really enjoy and there is frustration if the parent and the child start at the same time and one of them starts progressing faster than the other, usually the adult, because mm -hmm. they practice and they have body awareness. Well, and other depending things. on the age of the adult, sure. Yeah. So these, these are things that I think all come down to recognizing that the child may be on a different pace path than mm -hmm. the adult. I don't care if you are a black belt and you run the school and your child is a student. When you are home, you should be operating as a parent. Yeah. Because I've seen it. I've seen so many problems come up from the other. It becomes blurry. Now, if you're an exception, if you have a school and your child trains and loves to train and you train at home together and I don't know, the kid calls you by your title, whatever, right? There, there are exceptions to every rule. I'm not going to find fault with that. But I think more often, what is the case that we're talking about? We're talking about a parent who starts, you know, maybe a couple of years after, a couple of years before the kid. Mm -hmm. And so they had their own experiences with martial arts training and they try to, they were oftentimes, they wish they had started earlier. Mm -hmm. They create that association with the child and they push, 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 push. Yeah. Let's go to competitions. You could be so awesome, ah, right? Like they, they take cheerleading too to the next, far. To, to the next level, past where it pa could be. Past where it's helpful. Yeah, yeah. And it creates a negative association for mm -hmm. the kid, for the child. So I think that the best thing for a parent and a child to do in this context, when the parent and child both train, is to have very clear boundaries understand where those are and probably rope in the instructor yeah. to get their buy-in. Yep. Because I've known instructors who want the parents to encourage the kids to train. You know, hey, uh, I want them to do the, you know, do this new form, you know, three times a day, 10 times a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the parent is helping to implement the request of the instructor. That's very different than I pay for your classes, go yep. practice, rah, 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 right? Which uh, I, I've known plenty mm -hmm. who that seems to be the tone. That's what I hear from the kids. I even hear it from the parents. I made my kids go practice seven hours last week. Bragging about that? <laughs> yeah. I got something to brag about. Yeah. And, and it might sound a little counterintuitive to what you just, we talked about just a second ago about engaging the kids and asking them about what they did in class mm -hmm. and, but when you are a parent who trains, keeping that separation of when you're at home, you're a parent. When you're in the dojo, you're a student. Um, that doesn't mean that if you train, you're not allowed to still engage your child sure. during the weekday, you know, you know, between classes. But I think there's something very different between, because let's face it, adults are likely going to be in a different class at a minimum likely learning different things mm -hmm. right so still engaging the child with what they learned is a good thing and i also think the the might go off on a little tangent here but the age of the child that makes a difference in it how does. you interact with them as well you know if, if if i'm training with my six-year-old talking to them between classes on what they learned is great and like if they want to you know encouraging them to practice on their own is great uh and that's lovely. But if I'm training with my 14 year old and I'm going to practice at home on my own and saying, Hey, Jeremy, you're my 14 year old. Uh, you know, I'm going to go practice my forms. You want to come with me? You want to you train, train with me? You know? And if they're like, no, oh, that's okay. It's totally fine. Model the behavior, set it in a positive light. Yeah. One of the things that I've heard some parents say that has been very helpful for them in their relationship with their child when they both, well, either whether they train or not, they talk about it on the drive home and that's it. Yeah. Once they get home, that's it. Mm. Especially if something critical has come up, mm -hmm. you know, the kid acted up, the kid didn't pass a promotion test, you know, anything like that. I think that is key to have, a, a, it's a battery. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's see if we can sum this up. The role of parents, as far as it relates to the martial arts education of a child is to be positive and encouraging yep. and to create 
and hold to appropriate boundaries and be engaged and be engaged yeah i think that's part of being positive yeah well positive yes but being engaged okay asking i I see what you're saying yeah so we so that we got three i think so positive engaged create and maintain appropriate boundaries Mm -hmm. anything else we should add no i think that's great all right if you like this show check out some of the others if you have topic ideas email us jeremy at whistlekick.com if you have something for a q a episode which we do those periodically andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio.com so that way i don't see them so when they're asked they're kind of secret fresh questions check out all the things that we do go to whistlekick.com follow us on social media make sure you're aware of all the different things that we do from books to training programs at whistlekickprograms.com we're adding new ones periodically We're adding new books all the time. There's so much going on with what we do. If all you do is listen to the show, that's great. I'm glad you get value out of the show, but you would probably find value in some of the other things that we do. And the best place to start is whistlekick.com. That's all. So until next time, train Train hard, hard, smile, and have have a great day. day.